Welcome home with Pastor Alice Smith, a program that represents the place that Christ has prepared for us. Good morning. We want to welcome you to our Wednesday morning broadcast of Welcome Home. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today. What a wonderful day it is. What a wonderful privilege to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. And to hear his voice. So let's start out in prayer. Father God, we just bless you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord God, for the people who are watching this broadcast today. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would open their ears to hear, open their eyes to receive the see and open their hearts to receive your word this day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Aren't you glad? You know, there's a scripture that says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within his gate. So see, you are entering into the house of the Lord today through this broadcast. The Holy Spirit is here. Father God is here. Jesus is here for you to meet your need today. We've received so many testimonies. People have called in for prayer. They were hopeless and God changed their lives. You see, it's a supernatural thing. It's not Pastor Alice, but it's a supernatural thing that occurs because of the Holy Spirit, because of his presence. And that's what we want to talk about today. Amen. Always pray about what the Lord wants me to give to you. And his word is always on time. Amen. It always is, is the right word for the for the day. And so for this day, he wanted me to talk about fire. God's fire. Fire. And we want to look at scripture. So I want you to turn with me, if you have your Bible, to Luke chapter 3, verse 16. And we're going to read the word of God together. This is the King James Version. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchets of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. See, there's something about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's what Jesus was was what would do and that's what john was saying john was saying you know i indeed and baptize you but there's somebody that's coming greater than i and that's jesus christ who will baptize you with the holy spirit and with fire amen and with fire so we hear about you know the disciples and how Jesus made them a promise. He said, I want you to wait in the upper room. And it, the, the, the disciples were there waiting for the promise to come, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And see, we're talking about the fire today because, see, we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We need the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with fire. And see, that's what God is bringing to you today because you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit with fire. And you're probably saying, well, Pastor Alice, what is that? So we're going to talk about it in just a minute. So let's read another scripture. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And it reads, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So you see the disciples, they were waiting for the promise. And the Holy Spirit, you know, in this one place, they were all with one place on one accord. The wind of the Holy Spirit came. And the cloven tongues set upon their tongues, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, with fire. So the cloven tongues appeared as fire on their tongues. Amen. And see, that's a miraculous uh, manifestation of the Holy Spirit, baptizing the disciples, baptizing those that were in that upper room, 120, I believe is the record. Uh, 
but they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with fire. So we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit and we need the fire of God to come upon us to burn away the residue, to burn away the, the things that are not right in our life and to set us on fire, the course that God has for us. Because see those things, those things in life, they can slow you down. They can cause you to be going at a very slow pace because you don't have the fire. But see, God, the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus wants to give you the baptism of the Holy Spirit today with fire. So I know you're hungering and thirsting for this right now. And I've got another scripture here. And we're going to go to Mark chapter 3, verse 11. And it reads, I indeed, this is John the Baptist speaking, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now see, only God, only Jesus, only the Holy Spirit can baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire fire amen some of you need a, a feeling today some of you need to be filled with the holy spirit and with fire today and god's going to do that for you today he's giving me this word for you today so i know you're hungry and thirsting for it and when i pray god's going to fill you and you're going to have the fire with that amen praise god praise god so we're talking about the fire today and i want to talk about one thing too in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, uh, it's, uh, verse 29, it says, For our God is a consuming fire. Do you know that God shows himself through fire a lot in the, in the scriptures? And also as uh, a flaming torch, uh, a smoking furnace, uh, a smoking pot. Uh, smoke on the mountain it says see when fire is is uh, in a place you will see the smoke come out and so we're going to re read um, in Genesis chapter 15 it talks about God being that smoking furnace and a flaming torch how powerful our Lord and Savior is he is so powerful and see this this is uh, I'm going to paraphrase it for you but this was an opportunity that Abraham had to see God in a whole new light. And see, this is when God had given Abraham the promise that he was going to make him father of all nations. And he was telling him to, to tell the stars, as, as if you can count the stars, that's how many um, people that God was bringing into Abraham, the nations. He's going to be a father of many nations. And so uh, God told Abraham, to prepare sacrifices. So he prepared the sacrifice and he laid it on the altar. And uh, God is giving him an assurance, a promise that he is going to bring to pass what he has promised. And just like God today, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he has promised you something, he's going to bring it to pass. He's the only one that can bring it to pass for you. And so in scripture, and let's look at this last scripture here. This is in Genesis chapter uh, 15 verse 7 and so Abraham he asked God how shall I know that you're going to bring this to pass and God told him to make that sacrifice and lay it on the altar and God said no of a surety I will bring this promise to pass so God's word was in Abraham his word was there his voice was there he heard God speak to him. The word of God came upon Abram. And as he laid these sacrifices here, it says in Genesis chapter 15, verse 7, and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. So see, God came, his presence came as a smoking furnace and a burning lamp. Amen. So God's presence is needed today you need god's presence so when you're baptized with the holy spirit and with fire god's presence comes upon you and it's just like jeremiah said it's like fire shut up in my bones amen and see god wants you to experience his presence today he wants you to experience the fire today the fire that you once had he wants you to get that fire back amen and i want to pray for you today 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that man today. I pray for that woman today. I pray for that girl today. I pray for that boy today. Lord, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will baptize them now with your fire today. Baptize them with the Holy Spirit and with fire today. Baptize them. Descend upon them, Lord God. Let your presence fill the room. Fill their mind. Fill their heart. Fill their body, Lord God. Let them feel that fire, Lord God, today. This is a supernatural work that only you do, Holy Spirit. So just as the disciples were on one accord in one place, waiting for the promise, the people are waiting, Holy Spirit, for you to descend upon them with physical manifestation of your power, your presence, right now in the name of Jesus. Descend upon them. Fall upon them. Refresh them right now. Show them, Lord God, that you are with them. Strengthen them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Cleanse them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Give them that new life, that fresh start today. In Jesus' name. I see eyes opening up, spiritual eyes. God is revealing, taking off the layers of um, just the seat that was on your eyes now, that your eyes are being, are open now in Jesus' name. I just see like revelation coming to you that you would begin to again to see visions. God said that you will begin to again, begin again to see visions. God is giving you visions today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I see angels encamped around about you right now in the name of Jesus. I see that fire that's in you now. That you have now have the, the ability to go forth with zeal to preach the word of God again. That fire. Amen. Like never before. So Father, we just bless you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Holy Spirit for filling the people today. Thank you for your word being, being, um, being set in their lives, Lord God. And I just see angels encamped around about those that God has filled today with his presence and his power. I pray, Father God, that they will begin now to speak in tongues, Lord God, that they will begin now to speak again in tongues. I see the baptism of the Holy Spirit causing you to speak in tongues right now. God is staring up that gift. He's staring up that gift that's in you right now. He's opening ears right now in the name of Jesus. That baptism of fire is upon you right now. And it's like fire that shot up in your bones. You'll begin to preach again the word of God with power, with his power. In Jesus' name, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Just lift your hands and begin to praise him. Lift your hands and begin to worship him. Lift your hands and begin to cry out and thank him for what he's done today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for blessing the people. Thank you for, for your power going out through the airways. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done today in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I pray that you have received that prayer today. And if you need further prayer, I want you to call us. Our 1-800 number is on the screen. Call us, and we will pray for you. Now stay tuned for our musical selection. God bless you.
sing of your name. speaking in tongues and now you have fire and now he wants you to go forth and do the miracles that he did that Jesus did when he was on this earth so we're going to talk about 10 leopards who were cleansed amen uh, the 10 leopards and so we're going to look at scripture we're going to go to Luke chapter 17 and we're going to begin reading 11 through 19 so follow with me, get your uh, your Bibles out, uh, get your paper and pen, and begin to read the Word of God with me as we go through Scripture today. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. 
And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, were, not, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. So here we have scripture about a miracle that Jesus did. And Jesus did so many miracles. And we as his disciples, we're to do miracles in Jesus' name. God has given us the power in Luke chapter 10 verse 19 he says Jesus says behold I give unto you power so he's given us power to tread over serpents and over scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us but he also has given us the power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover he's given us uh, the power to raise the dead and he said that these miracles signs and wonders will follow those that believe so if you believe today that God has given you the power to do these miraculous miracles. That God wants you to go forth. He wants you to go out. So here we have a situation of these are ten men. And it says that as Jesus entered this, this uh, village, there was, he was met by ten men. And they were lepers, so they stood off because they knew that, you know, lepers, they have leprosy. They have a disease. And so they stood far off because they had been... Uh, excommunicated from the community because they can't live with other people because of the disease that they had. So they stood stood afar off. But see, Jesus entered into their situation. See, see, Jesus can enter into your situation. Whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you're facing, Jesus is not afraid of your sickness. He's not afraid of the disease. He's not afraid of things that uh, that the world says you should be afraid of. Because see, Jesus is all powerful. He's almighty. He is our healer, great physician. And so it says here that, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. So maybe that's you today. Maybe you're lifting up your voice saying, Jesus, have mercy on me because of this sickness, because of this disease, because of this condition that I'm in. Jesus, have mercy on me. The Lord hears our prayers. He's such a wonderful Lord and Savior. He loves us so much. He hears and he answers our prayers. That's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. We indeed are not worthy of it, but he hears and answers our prayers. He's faithful. And so it said, reads here that and when he saw them, so see, Jesus saw their condition. He saw what condition they were in. He said to them, go show yourselves unto the priest. Because see, that was the, the thing back in the Bible days that when um, they were healed of a disease or a situation, they were to go show themselves unto the priest so that the priest could pray for them. And then they could be free to go back into uh, you know, their families, go back and, and, and uh, be amongst their families. So that was the reason why Jesus said, go show yourselves unto the priest. Because that was one of the commandments that God gave back in the Old Testament. And it says that it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. But sometimes God will give you that commandment to just go. Because he's already done the work. He's already filled you. He's already healed you. So he wants you to just go. And that's what he instructed these men to do. Just go right just go and show yourselves unto the priest and it says as they went that that means they took action god wants you to take action as you go forth god will do the work for you see we rest in knowing that power doesn't belong to us it belongs to god but god gives us power over demonic forces over sickness and disease he's given us dominion over things and he wants us to go forth. And it says here, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. So only one out of 10, that's, that's, that's uh, 1% turned back. That one person turned back 
and he began to glorify God, giving him thanks. Are you that one today that will give God thanks for what he's doing in your life? Are you that one today that will glorify him? And it says here, he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God, and he fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, he said, wasn't there ten? that were cleansed? Where are the other nine? You know, where are the other people? Where are the other people that's going to praise and give thanks to God? Where are they? Jesus is asking, where are they? But see, you can be that one that will glorify God, that will, will worship the Lord Jesus in truth. Amen. And he says here, there were not found, there, there are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger that was a Samaritan and he said unto him arise go thy way thy faith hath made thee whole God wants your faith to be made whole today understanding that when God sends us forth to somewhere he's already made the provision that is going to happen so if God is sending you to pray for someone who's sick today Go forth in his power. Go forth in the fire that he's given you. Go forth in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and do those miracles and signs and wonders. Jesus says, greater work shall we do because uh, Jesus has gone to heaven. So he wants us to do that greater work. So step out and do the greater work. Go and then glorify God when you see that person healed, when you see that person delivered, when you see that person no longer in bondage. God did it. Glorify God. Give him glory for using you today. Amen. And I want to pray for you. Maybe you're sick today. Maybe you're this person, that, that leper that's crying out with a disease today. If you have a sickness or a disease today, I want you to lay your hands on that part of the body right now. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over sickness and disease. I command migraine headaches to go in the mighty name of Jesus. I command sickness and disease to leave the body right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, your healing virtue to heal that person today, Lord God. To heal that person. I see someone that has a lump on their right side. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I command that lump to go in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke that sickness and disease. I rebuke that tumor. I command you to Go right now in Jesus' name. Power of the Holy Spirit fall upon that person today. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. If you need further prayer, I want you to call us. Our phone number is on the screen right there. Call us and give us your testimony of what God has done for you. Or if you need additional prayer, call us. We have praise. We have praise warriors and prayer warriors available for you today. God bless you. Stay tuned for our tea thought for today. Thank you for watching today's broadcast with Pastor Alice Smith. We invite you to tune in next week as we continue to explore the place that Christ has prepared for us. Welcome home.